Hey, Exercise Confidence listeners, thank you so much for tuning in today. In this episode, you will hear from Tarek Hauks. Tarek has started his own supplement company, and he is honestly the picture of what it means to exercise confidence. But Tarek hasn't always been this way. He dives into his past and explains to us how he was able to find and create his own confidence on his life's journey from growing up as somebody who was very intimidated and weak to being somebody who lives boldly and intentionally every day. Tarek also is a really great example of why it is so important that we be diligent with the people that we surround ourselves with and what we allow into our body and our mind. So without further ado, let's dive into this episode today on Exercise Confidence. What is up, Exercise Confidence listeners? It is JR here, and I am here with Tarek. Is that how you say oh, it? it? Well, it's Tarek, but close enough, I'll take Tarek. it. Tarek, okay. Tarek Hauks? Is that how you say the last name too, Hauks? Yeah, Hauks, yeah. Perfect. All right. And so, Tarek, can you tell us about yourself in about 20 seconds? Go. Oh, man, that's like an impossible feat. Okay, so uh, I'm 25 years old, graduated from UCLA, currently self-employed entrepreneur with a supplement company who, that's it, man, very positive, happy-go-lucky individual. Is that, does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's great. No, we love it. The honesty is fantastic. Simplicity, concise, fantastic. You know? So, would you say you're somebody that has always been a confident individual? No, absolutely not. So my journey started seven and a half years ago. Um, I watched this video. It's called Ziz the Legacy. And at that time, so I'm six foot two. And at that time, um, I was 145 pounds at my height. And I watched this video of a guy who had the exact same backstory as me. And then he found the gym and he found that passion. And then he slowly but surely like built that confidence. To, it started as like an outlet, say, to talk to girls and then developed into this this whole like euphoria of not taking this gift of a life for granted. And then that's what it turned into for me. So seven and a half years ago, I had absolutely zero confidence. And then, yeah, that's where, that's where it all started, man. Right off the top, the, yeah. the theme that seems to be with you is fitness, right? You talked about in your 20 seconds right now that you are an entrepreneur with your own supplements company. Your confidence journey really started about seven and a half years ago when you saw this video and it was very inspiring about somebody's fitness journey. And then it seems as though you are on your own fitness journey that is also allowing you to very literally exercise confidence. So can you tell me more about what that has been like for me from the start to where you're kind of at now with your whole fitness journey? Yeah, so I actually was thinking about a lot in terms of uh, the, your signature in your email of what confidence is and how it's basically like a muscle. It's something that you practice daily, right? Um, if it's confidence, not exercised is diminished. And the gym is the easiest analogy for what confidence is because to me, the definition of confidence is just keeping the promises that you make to yourself. And the gym is one of the easiest promises that you can keep. Um, the best advice I could give anyone, it doesn't even have to be fitness related. Fitness is just a passion of mine. It's the what to my why. And my why is to inspire others that we can all make it. That video that I watched seven and a half years ago of that bodybuilder, he died at age 22. And that he said that line and it's on my wristband. And he said, we're all going to make it. And it's just, I say that every single day on all my social media outlets because it's like, and this goes with confidence like perfectly. Um, when you, the hardest part about a transformation, and this is going to be the best advice I could possibly give any one of your listeners, is not the work. It is not the action. It is not the discipline. That shit is so easy. That is nothing compared to how hard it is um, to believe that one day you're going to look a certain way have a certain financial income, be in a certain relationship, um, travel to whatever countries, whatever your goal is, the hardest part about the transformation process is believing that one day that is going to become a reality when there's nothing around you today to suggest that that day will ever come. When there's when you've been working and working and working, there's no evidence around you to suggest that you're going in the right direction. You have to go on, excuse my language, fucking soul belief that one day is going to be your day. And the gym is just the easiest way to see that progression on a daily, daily basis because it's the, the quickest, we'll say, return on your investment. Other things like finances or relationships or academics, it's like a very, very slow return. But all you have to do is look in the mirror to see if you're progressing or not in the gym. And then in terms of this, it's called the success cycle that uh, I got from Tony Robbins. And it's basically 
the key to building your confidence is four tiers. It's, it starts with your thoughts. It starts with belief. And then your belief determines how much potential you can tap into. The amount of potential you tap into will elicit the amount of um, action that you're going to take. And the action that you take will determine the amount of results you're going to get. So someone who starts, say, in the gym with a shitty belief, they tell themselves um, it's not going to work. They tap into very little potential of what they're capable of. They'll take little action as a result just to satisfy their bullshit story. And then as a result, they'll get poor results just to satisfy the story that says, see, I told you it wasn't going to work. And so what happens? They tap into less potential. They take worse or a little, uh, less action. They get worse results until they quit versus a great strong belief. And this goes for everyone who's trying to exercise confidence. You'll tap into the, um, more potential. You'll take more action. You'll get better results. And then that process is just as self-fulfilling, but in a positive way that's only conducive to your growth. What you said right there about the mindset, the belief, um, and how difficult that really is, because it's the starting point, essentially, almost like having a a limiting belief, right? And so what is interesting to me is I, the last interview I just did, this subject came up, and I think that it's no coincidence, at least for me, that um, this theme keeps coming up because I have been harping on my exercise confidence Instagram about you're either going to make a excuse or you're going to make a way for your goal to happen. That's one of my favorite quotes. It's by Greg Play. It says, if you want something bad enough, you find a way. And if not, you find an excuse. And another great quote is by uh, Joan, uh, Tony Robbins and Jordan Belford. They say, the only thing stopping you from achieving your goal is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. That's all it is. A limiting belief is the story you tell yourself. The word impossible is an opinion. The word, I, there's no such thing as impossible. There's no such thing as I can't. You want me to tell your viewer something? It, the, the truth is, it's not a priority whatever your goal is because if it was a priority the fact is you'd find a way if not just like you said you'd find an excuse and for me that is why i'm doing uh my rat life company that's why i'm doing this whole fitness thing is it's not about the what it's not about the content it's not about it being a pre-workout it's changing people's story if one person at a time can change the victim mentality to become the hero of their life like think of your life as a movie think of your life as a book would you even want to read it at time's end where you were just the victim of your entire life, where you just took, um, where you just allocated blame to everyone and everything and didn't assume any responsibility and take, you took no action. You, the way that I see it is you have to be active in your own rescue. You have to save yourself. No one is coming to save you, you know? So that, if we could change everyone's story of losing the victim character, because that is a choice. You can say, this is happening to me or this is happening for me. And when you say this is happening for me, you ask yourself, what can I do about it? And the second you put uh, yourself in the control and now you have power to do something. And then that's literally how heroes are forged. And uh, that's that's what my whole why is. It's just I'm trying to get people to lose the victim mentality because it is a decision. And um, it's not like this gradual thing. Like you don't overnight decide um, or I'm sorry, you don't over the span of a long time years, you know, are a hero or a victim. It's a split decision. You can decide in an instant that you're no longer going to live in a state of scarcity, in a state of lack. You can live in a beautiful, abundant state. You can understand that you cheering someone else on is, uh, it doesn't in any way diminish your potential of winning. You know, So why not motivate and inspire and you know, <laughs> cheer everyone on to win? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going on a tangent. You understand my idea. <laughs> no, I get it. Don't worry about tangents, man. I mean, that <laughs> life, life is one big, beautiful tangent, right, from the day we're born. But I just absolutely love and empathize and agree with the idea that you motivating somebody else is not going to take away from your own success. It's not going to hinder your um, progress in any way. Like that's one of the big reasons why I started Exercise Confidence. I've got my own story where exactly what you said, it was was a split moment and I had to decide, am I going to look at this like it's happening to me or for me? And that was it. And I went. And and so as somebody yourself who – identifies as not always being confident what was it like for you to create that mindful mindset shift interesting um (laughs) to decide to be more confident is that what you're asking (laughs) yeah essentially because you know the first question i posed to you was have you always been confident you said no i saw this video and boom it changed it what was the the pre Tarek like and how were you (laughs) able to just i guess how were you able like why in a sense, like why? Yeah. Why did you decide that's 
that's it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to change my life after seeing that. I have Okay, that's perfect. Uh, I'll, I'll answer this in several segments. So, number one, the shift happened when I decided to no longer play uh, the victim of my story. So, the Tark before... Tark was the uh, charismatic, confident that you see before you. Uh, <laughs> was was uh, basically someone who said, um, I can't do this because of X, Y, Z. I can't do this because of this person, this circumstance, this condition, this event. I gave everyone else power and everyone else control uh, and everyone else's meaningless opinions to wait uh, basically the direction and the destiny of my life. And the day that I made the shift was the day that I decided, you know, if I want to make it, which is my favorite quote, we're all going to make it, uh, then I have to take responsibility for, for my own life. I have to take 100% responsibility, uh, assign no criticism, condemn no one, assign no blame, and just say, this is my fault. And honestly, the reason why that's so hard for people is because it requires a lot of strength and a lot of humility. As in, it is a lot easier to say, I can't do this because of you, than it is to say, I'm the problem. It's my mm, fault. Mm-hmm. That is... That takes way more strength that people, uh, in terms of emotional maturity, don't have. And then, not to backtrack, but you hit the nail on the head. So I just finished reading this book called uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, which I would highly recommend to any one of your uh, listeners uh, listening. Is He says there's three things you can control, right? What you focus on, uh, the meaning that you give things, and the action that you're going to take. And there's a beautiful quote, and this is the great advice for someone in terms of um, seeking the confident life, is... A man or woman with a strong enough why can endure any how. You want, you want to know how to break scarcity in an instant? Stop focusing on yourself and, and uh, put all your focus, energy, effort, thought into serving something or someone greater than you. A why greater than you. A person, a mission greater, bigger than you. The second you do that, you'll put in so much more effort because at the end of the day, people will fail and quit on themselves all the time. You don't get up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m. for yourself. You do it for the people relying on you, for the people who you need to level up for the team. You know what I mean? For the mission, for your partner, for your children. Um, and that's when people really start to rise. And I think another great thing that you can do is uh, burn your boats. So for me, to answer your question, now, now I always bring it full circle. Uh, to answer <laughs> your question, is, um, it happened for me when I decided to burn my, mo- my boats. And that's a story by Genghis Khan. Um, he Genghis Khan, when he would uh, send his troops to conquer foreign islands, he would uh, order his troops to burn their boats. Why? Because he gave them no choice. You were, I get, you, you were either going to take the fucking island or you're going to die. And the fact of the matter is people, when it comes to dying or succeeding, tend to succeed. The problem is we give ourselves a way out. We give ourselves a plan B. And the worst part is we justify why it's okay. Why I didn't want that dream anyway. It's fine that I, I don't see my dream realized. And that is the mm. worst thing that you can do. And it's just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah, I love that. I think that is I've never heard it put that way. Um I've heard the whole burn your boat thing, but uh the way you just phrased it there at the end, I've I've never heard it like that. So that's why I was like, yeah, no, I I do. I dig that and um again, it, it I feel this theme and I don't know if like I'm trying to be told something here about making a way <laughs> or making an excuse. <laughs> but it, it is fantastic. And so going off of that and into where you're at now, you have nice. started your own company. But I guess before we jump right into that, how did you get to this point? Because you got your degree at UCLA, as you mentioned. I did. And so what did you study at UCLA? Like, were you in business <laughs> or were you in, um, I don't know what you would study for supplements, I guess, chemistry? <laughs> like, no, listen, so UCLA was a four-year waste of my money. <laughs> it was a four-year uh, gym membership. As, as far as I'm concerned, I could have gotten the same education with a $5 library card. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sorry, like, I UCLA. Don't, I, don't, uh, I mean, I don't discourage education, but in terms of it being your passion and your end all, anyone who's in school, it's needless stress. And honestly, the educational system, the reality of it is it's to, uh, it's to create – employees it's to create people who will work for 40 years doing a job they don't like um to uh live a life they hate um to basically work until they die and then um not to like get morbid but (laughs) it's basically it's 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 a form of control and it's a form of like um 
I'm, I'm just I'm super opposed to the traditional educational system because it's uh, it's memorization, regurgitation, and not learning for the sake of learning. And I hate that. Um, you should be learning and studying and doing what you're passionate about. And I studied ancient history, uh, classics, when I was an undergrad at UCLA. And the reason I made that choice, because originally I was a physiological science, right? And um, there was a girl who was a neuroscience major. I asked her, you know, why are you doing that? What do you want to become a doctor? And then she was like, absolutely not. I just love neuroscience. And I was like, I love that. And she was like, do what you're passionate about, not do something you hate for eight years, like in terms of kids who go into pre-med, uh, just to one day maybe want to do something you're passionate about. Why don't you just do something you're passionate about now? And that's exactly what I did. Is It was just four years of a, basically a gym membership um, to slowly but surely cultivate and create my confidence. And then it, it quieted the, the voice inside of me that gives a shit what other people think. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. This Don't get me wrong. And this is straight from a quote from Gary uh, uh, Vaynerchuk. And it goes, I care what other people think, like my siblings, my family, my mom, friends, whatever, but not enough for it to deter me from my goals. Like, and I always notice that when I add someone new on like social media and then I'm like, oh man, I hope they don't like watch my story, you know, because it's just being like quirky or whatever. And then I'm just like, oh, that's a shame. You know, <laughs> like if they unfollow, you know, like it's just, there's a great quote by Dr. Seuss, be who you are and say how you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Yes. The challenge is when exercising confidence is people put too much weight into other people's opinions that are so meaningless and so weightless that have zero effect on your life. They don't pay your bills. They, if you look at just the Darwinism of the, the human experience, right? Fear used to be a real thing. Fear was when a saber-toothed tiger was going to attack you. So your body would start to produce cortisol. Your, your adrenalines would start to uh, rise to put yourself in a fight-or-flight state, okay? Now, uh, a terror to people is being unfriended. A terror to someone today is someone not liking, getting less likes on their <laughs> social media posts. And yeah. it's just... And, and th- th- that's the sad reality of it is, is like the more connected we get on social media, the more people's uh, confidence diminish because they, they give more of a shit about the filters on Instagram and, and being happy for uh, for the internet than being happy for yourself. And the best, another great advice that I could give to anyone listening is the best way to improve your confidence, like I said, is just keeping the promises that you make to yourself. The way that I do it is I write down my goals every single day, every day. I write down the, the most uh, meaning or a seemingly insignificant task, as in make my bed take a shower, go for a walk, go to the gym, eat this meal. And then when you cross it off, you get this uh, chemical called dopamine. It's a happy chemical. It makes you feel good. It's very addictive. You get the same chemical from uh, like gambling and smoking, but this is a constructive way to get dopamine. When I go to the gym, I get the second happy chemical. I get endorphins. You can achieve that by training or by walking. When you're coaching someone, when you're teaching someone, just like you're doing um, when you're, say, on social media and being that light for other people, you're getting serotonin. That's the leadership chemical. Parents get it when they're uh, with their children. When a team wins, they don't want to win for themselves. They want to win one, you know, a medal or whatever for the coach. That's serotonin. That's the third happy chemical. And the fourth one is oxytocin. It's doing something selflessly for other people, and that's the best advice I can give someone in terms of shifting their focus from themselves, living in a state of scarcity, living in a state of lack, to living in a beautiful state of abundance. Stop focusing on you and focusing on uh, serving something greater than you. Focus on what you can give others. And I think if uh, p- more people would do that, they would um, escape that state of scarcity. They live in a beautiful state of abundance. And then, dude, anything that they want is going to be there. And then by you just constantly overnight just, or day by day, just like you said, um, uh, actually practicing it, exercising it, being patient with yourself the whole time. And I really want to elaborate on that if you let me is – um, you'll slowly but surely keep the, co- the promises that you make to yourself and slowly but surely you'll boost your confidence. And then what that's doing is it's developing your emotional intrinsic security. And what that means is you're going to be so internally confident and uh, of your own self-value, of your own self-worth, you won't care what other people think about you. At least not enough to deter you from your goals, from your grind, from your, from your vision, from uh, realizing your dreams. And the day you can make that shift, it is so powerful. Like, I'll tell you the day I noticed it. It was my senior year at UCLA, and I was wearing these super, super tiny festival shorts, you know, like the ones that are high thigh. (laughs) Uh, I was wearing those, and I was walking around campus with nothing but that on, shirtless, super, super high shorts, and I. it was the most euphoric feeling ever, not caring what anyone thought. And you just being yourself, you just being happy, you're just not caring about the critics, the people who are outside looking in, their judgments, their meaningless opinions – 
And once you get to that, I can't explain that euphoria. You have to experience it yourself. And the only way you're going to experience that is just by believing in you. And that's where it starts. The reason thoughts are so powerful is because the second you decide to become the hero of your story, you'll stop caring about all the other uh, the, all the other people who are just – there's a great quote by uh, Theodore Roosevelt called Man in the Arena, and it says uh, the, um, the credit belongs to the man who's actually – his face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because victory can't be won without shortcoming or error. And if he fails, at least he strives valiantly, so his place will not be lost with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. And I think that's the best – The best, uh, you know, there, there's no other worthy cause that you can do um, except strive valiantly for whatever your dream is, not care about what the critics of life think because you're going to face them. No, the, I saw a picture. It was of Leonardo DiCaprio, and it said – he was like looking down smiling. It was like, you can't please any, everybody. You're not pizza. You know, so <laughs> – but, you know, so – but the, that's that's the thing. Just keep the promises that you make to yourself slowly but surely, dude. You're gonna live in such a beautiful, confident state. And if you do anything where you're getting progress, progress is happiness. It's not the goal. The achievement doesn't matter. When I did my six month transformation four weeks ago, I didn't give a shit about the physique. That's just a who cares? Who cares what you look like? The best perk is the person you become. That's what it's about. And a great quote by Tony Robbins, it's not what you get. It's about who you become and what you're able to give now that you've become more. And it's just, it is so true. It's just exemplified in the gym, but you can apply that to any other aspect in your life. If you can become more financially inclined, you're able to give so much more uh, financial value to other people. The more books that I'm reading, the more I'm able to help people with like, uh, you know, psychology and psychiatry and the relationships and just changing their perspective on not taking this gift of a life for granted. And then the final thing before you uh, ask your next question is another shift that I made was, and this is huge. For anyone that's trying to exercise confidence, for anyone that's trying to live a positive, happy-go-lucky life, you cannot say, I'll be happy when. The biggest misconception mm. is thinking that your happiness is going to be gleaned. That's the wrong word. That means to learn. It's going to be uh, acquired by the goal, by the physique, by the finances, by the relationship. It is not. If you don't find gratitude, grace, happiness now, where you are right now, in a fucking conversation, in a cup of coffee, you will not find it when you have more. If you can't find gratitude and happiness for this gift now, if you can't love yourself who you are now, you're not going to be happy when you have this physique, this money, whatever. And that's the biggest problem I see with people when the gym transformation, their financial transformation, it's they're, they're the, I call it the 80%, 20% rule, and I got this from Ed Milet. He said 80% should be gratitude and appreciation, 20% hunger, 20% what can I improve on, 20% you know, uh, what, what more can I do, what more can I give, what, what, uh, you know, that's how you grow. Versus people spend 80% shitting on themselves. They'll look themselves in the mirror and see every single character flaw, every single thing that needs improvement, and they will neglect all – the whole journey. They'll, they'll neglect all the wins that they've had to – all the adversity that they had to overcome to be the person they are today. And they'll just completely disregard all that, focus all their energy, time, focus, heart on all the failure. And that's actually a quote from Jim Rohn's uh, Philosophy for Successful Living. It goes, um, uh, it's very hard to be to love and, of yourself uh, because we're so aware of our own failures, our own shortcomings. And the reason people lack confidence is because they are so cognizant, conscious of the promises they do not keep to themselves. And that's what it is. When they know the gap between who they are and the potential of who they can be, and they know they're cutting themselves short, and they know they're half-assing the work, and they're not doing their due, their, uh, due diligence, and they're not taking the action that they know that they could be doing, that is what is diminishing their confidence. It's the promises they are not keeping to themselves. So I would uh, recommend to all your viewers to live in a state of 80% dude, love yourself. And this takes time, man. Like for me, I'm very hungry, right? So – it's very hard to be like, I love myself for the way I am. And it's like, no, bitch, you got to work harder. You have, there's, so, there's so much more that you could be achieving and you could be doing. But it's being patient with yourself during the process. And like you said, practice, persistence, patience. And then that's how we all make it. Do you know what I'm saying, JR? I know what you're saying, dude, and I love it. I love that. I'm going to write that. I'm going to write down P cubed right here for practice, persistence, patience. Because that stuff yeah. is clutch. I think that there's this theme that I'm getting with you right now, and it has to do with um, I don't. I'm not gonna say taking 
or receiving, but I guess it would be um, ingesting, right? You are regurgitating a lot of knowledge that you've ingested. You are regurgitating a lot of gratitude that you've ingested and all these things that you're very intentional about because I think when we ingest something, for the most part, you're supposed to be intentional. Like you're picking up a bottle of water to drink it. You are going to make food so you can eat it. Those are things you ingest. You are choosing what you're going to watch on TV, right? And how important would you say what you ingest is, whether it's uh, self-talk, uh, who you listen oh my to, God. food, like all of that, like to okay. who you become? Okay, Here, here's the deal. Every single one of your readers, it's, God, I want to say 40 pages long. They Need to Read As a Man Thinketh by uh, James Allen. It's the number one book I could recommend. And they, really they, quick, we will... read nothing else in this life. We'll link everything um, that is expressed today, whether it's quotes, um, books, all that stuff will be in the bio, okay. you guys. So if you're hearing anything and you're like, yeah, I got to get a hold of it, it's in there. It's yeah. in the description. And here's the deal. If people understood how powerful thoughts are and how thoughts literally determine what you and I know as the human condition as our current circumstance we would be so much more protective of it's, it's called guard the uh the doorway of your mind as in i am so fucking conscious of everything that goes into my head as in you have to be uh control the internal dialogue as in not even in jest you cannot uh down talk yourself at all as in zero zero self negative uh negative self-talk as in, I don't call myself stupid. I don't call myself an idiot, even as a joke. Even as a joke, like you can, you that those seeds of like any sort of self doubt, you got to kick it to the curb. That shit has to go. That's number one. Two, you gotta ha you have to cut out all the negativity. As in, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. But when I used to, um, I would just constantly, anytime there was celebrity gossip, anytime there was drama, anytime there was negativity, turn that shit off. I do not watch the news. There's a great quote by Denzel Washington. It says, if you watch the news, you're misinformed. If you don't watch the news, you're uninformed. And it's just, you know, it's like, <laughs> I, but it's not, Tony Robbins says it best. The news isn't meant to uh, inform you. It's meant to startle you. Um, and so I do not watch the news. And I recommend to everyone, do not watch the news. I recommend to everyone, do not listen to gossip and drama and garbage like that on the radio. Um, I I'm very conscious of any time I'm in a conversation with someone to guard the doorway of my mind as in because people don't know it. They, they say, oh, you're the hey, the, you're one of the five people or whatever that you hang around with. The reason that's so true is because Ed Milet calls it a thermostat. And basically you will lower your work ethic, your drive, your hunger based on the temperature climate of the people you surround yourself by. So when you surround yourself with people who talk about limits we talk about negativity, we talk about excuses, we talk about being the victim of their life and blaming and allocating to everyone else but themselves, what do you think is going to happen? Who do you think you're going to become? Versus if you only surround yourself, and the reason that this is so hard is because it requires loneliness uh, or being alone, which inevitably makes you lonely a lot of the times. There's a great quote by Greg Play. It goes, uh, success is a lonely road, right? Because it's one very few embark on. Um, because you're not going to find a lot of friends there. Uh, you're, you know, <laughs> and, and the reason is I would rather be alone and by myself surrounded by a, a circle of positivity, encouragement, support, even if that means no one's in that circle versus having friends for the sake of company. And the reason is, is because like, I can't, I can't uh, emphasize this enough. Your internal dialogue is the thought that starts the belief that taps into the potential that determines the amount of action you take and that, uh, results or as a consequence, the amount of results that you get. And it's that uh, uh, self-fulfilling spiral upward. If you're not over hyper conscious of your thoughts and making sure that there is no negative influence on them, then you're sabotaging your potential success. You're forfeiting your potential happiness. And it is a decision. And it's a hard decision. It's very hard to tell your family to fuck off. It's very hard to leave... Uh, your family or leave your friends or leave a, a job or leave a, uh, a home environment that's negative. A lot of people don't have the courage to take that um, that leap. And there's a great quote by Walt Disney. It says, all dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. What he doesn't elaborate on is what that courage is. Mm -hmm. That is part of it. It's the courage to say, dude, I am not going to forfeit my life because and, and let me tie this into another quote. It's by Dallas McCarver, who he passed away. He was a bodybuilder. And he said he got criticized for uh, like the amount of weight he was lifting in the gym. And he said, I'm not going to shy away from advancement just because it's a number you feel uncomfortable with. And what you'll find a lot in this life is people project 
their own insecurities onto you. The reason that success is a spotlight shining down on a, or a, the reason that people hate, the reason that there's critics in life is because that's what success is. Success is a spotlight shining down on their missed opportunity. And it has nothing to do with you. When you succeed, when you're growing, when you're grinding, when you're prospering, people see where they could have been had they had the courage to pursue their dream. They see you and all you are is a mirror. You're a reflection of who they could have been, Mm -hmm. what they could have became, what they could have had, where they could have traveled to, had they had the fucking courage to believe in themselves, to pursue their dream, and to not care what the critics of life have to say. And then, um, yeah. Did did I answer the question? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I don't even remember what the question was. No, I'm kidding. Um, Yeah, yeah, you are. And honestly, what this is about here and what I aim to share through Exercise Confidence, it doesn't have to be answering the question in a sense that um it's right or wrong or anything like that it's just it's you being able to share what it is that has made you you um in a way that allows you to be confident and then allows you to then share that with others and help promote that because that's what I'm trying to do here and that's why I like you said you're selective with the thoughts that you allow into your mind I'm selective about who I invite on the show um, I'm not trying to invite somebody on I here that's it. Um, yeah, for sure. I'm not trying to invite people on here just for the sake of um, upping my numbers. I mean, my goal last year was, <laughs> honestly, my goal last year was to do a podcast a week. I think in the entire year, I wound up getting somewhere around like 20-ish. Um, Can I touch on something that you just said yeah. in terms of uh, um, uh, basically like the meaning that you give things? Um, that's the second thing in Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, is that you can control the meaning that you give things. And for me, how I'm like that that shift that i made in terms of uh like my confidence and my outlook is when i wouldn't get like a certain number of views or a certain number of likes um i used to say nobody gives a shit right and i and the, the only way that i made the shift was i saw this picture it was of keanu reeves and there was two two boxes right the first one was he was looking down all depressed on the bench and it said nobody gives a shit the second one he was smiling and it was like nobody gives a shit it was the, it was the exact <laughs> same thing and that's you can literally decide the meaning that things have. And yeah. it, it doesn't matter the adversity. It doesn't matter the tragedy. In the book Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about this thing in uh, psychiatry called tragic optimism. That even in the face of fear, pain, and even death, you can decide uh, a beautiful meaning. You can decide, I had to endure this tragedy, this adversity, to put me on this path, to grow from it, to become this person, so that you know maybe I could help this person down the road. Or I had to go through that to whatever. So that, that's – people – if they can change that dialogue to whatever you go through, whatever you go through in this life is happening for me and not to me, you change the paradigm. You change the story. You lose the victim character forever and you start to become the hero of your life. As in that book's premise is a guy called Viktor Frankl who survived four concentration camps in Auschwitz. And he lived in a state of um, love and passion and beauty. And he, he found joy in Auschwitz. He, and he came out of it after his entire family had died and been, Jeez. you know, horribly murdered. Jeez. And and his whole thing was, that thing happened for me. As in, he had to, I'm not saying, he, he says in the book specifically, he's not saying the only way you can live in a beautiful state is by enduring tragedy, but he's saying that you can um, decide to give things a beautiful meaning in spite of tragedy. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just a choice that people make. I see it all the time. People say, woe is me. This is happening to me versus I wish more people had the courage to say, what if this was happening for me? What if it, the best example I could give is like there's a picture. It's a flower getting rained on and it says, this isn't what I wanted. And then in the next picture, it's all sunshiny and it had grown. And it's like, but maybe it's what I needed. The gym is the perfect analogy because mm-hmm. the only way you grow is by failure. The only way you grow is by pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. Why is it? Why would it be different in any other aspect of your life? You only grow, you only get better by adversity. That's the only way, that's the only way you stretch, you know? So it, it applies to everything, every, every part of your life. So if you want to live outside of a state of scarcity, to live in a state of abundance, to not live in a state of lack, give things a beautiful meaning. Say this is happening for me and not to me. Give yourself a chance to become the hero of your story. And that's how we all make it, dude. That's it. What's up? That's how we're all gonna make it. We're gonna, we're all gonna make it, and I, we're all gonna make it, and we are all gonna make it. And you're a big key component into why we're all gonna make it because we're gonna talk about rat life now. Oh, I'm scared. Uh Don't be scared. (laughs) Don't be scared. We're gonna talk about it because we're gonna talk about it because service um, to something greater than yourself. 
hard. Is hard. It can be uh, something that maybe you don't immediately see satisfaction or any sort of uh, ROI, right? Like you're kind of, you, you can give so much of yourself yep. and yep. maybe you never see something come back to you. And at first, I mean, I can attest to this when I first started exercise confidence and I was just like telling people like, Hey, follow, 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 follow. Like I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in what I'm saying. And I think more people deserve to hear what I'm going to say because I'm fortunate enough that my confidence story has been one that has started since birth. I have parents that have just absolutely poured positivity into me, realism, but also a lot of belief in myself. My mom has always literally her little phrase for me is B-I-Y and it's believe in yourself. And she would shout it at me across the softball field as I was playing sports growing up and <laughs> she's very vocal. And so um, also nice. about the whole positive self-talk, but not yeah. everybody gets that right. Everybody's environment is different, but you have the power to change your environment as you touch on. And so same thing with service, right? Like whether um, it's religion, whether it is organizations, whether it is your own life mission, which we are uh, seeing with you and what we're going to talk about with you now, let's talk about what rat life is, because it seems to me that is your bigger purpose that you are serving to 100%. really get people to realize you can make it. And if you believe it, yeah. we are all going to make it. So let's go. We let's are, dive in. That's, that's exactly it. So before we dive into rat life, the plug is I want to tell you exactly what you said in terms of the return on the investment. There's a great quote comes from a famous book and it goes as you sow so shall you reap i think i think that's how it goes in the bible basically yeah, you here's reap what the deal, you sow right you you reap what you sow the, but the thing is and this is an amazing quote in terms of success and i'll tell you personally this is true now i'm not saying i've achieved all my success accolades but from what i have achieved i can i can attest to this quote being true and it's a quote by jim carrey and it goes the way I see it, it's about putting out there to the universe what it is you want and going after it and, and letting go of how it comes to pass. As in, you're going to get exactly what you want, not in the way that you think you're going to get it. The how is never, success is not a straight line. As in, you, you're, you, no one plans out in their business plan, um, so in a month from now, I'm going to fail and go bankrupt. Like, no, no one plans that out, right? right? So yeah. <laughs> no. in, terms, in terms of service and in terms of a return on investment for what you give, you don't get what you give. You get 10 times what you give, just not in the way that you think. Like for me, I, I'm, I, I call it uh, practicing oxytocin. I was like, I want to – like my brother, he uh, last week, he was like, <laughs> he was like, hey, do you want to – can you help me paint my bathroom? And then I thought about it, and then I was like I, – I decided – I could have given it a poor meaning. He's trying to use me. He's trying to whatever, you know, the what's in it for me kind of thing. The whole scarcity mindset. Or I could have given a beautiful meaning. I was like, wow, what an opportunity to do something that requires time, energy, and effort for someone else. So I get oxytocin from it. And, not, and because I'm giving, I will get in whatever different way, you know, comes. And it was just like, that's an abundance mindset. They think win-win. They think, dude, I'm just going to give, give, give. And not worry about the get. That's the problem with people. All they worry about is what, what about me? What about me? What am I going to get? And they, they, they look at every relationship transactional. As in, if I give you something, I should get something from you. You got to lose the how is the best advice I could give people. As in, give and then just have the confidence and belief that it's going to come back to you, but not what you get. It's going to more is going to come back to you, just not in the way that you think. So it's going to come back to you in... And just you're going to get everything that you want, not in the way that you think. And usually it comes down to in different people and different opportunities and just different circumstances. But that just comes from people's experience. So that said, and that answers that question. That, that doesn't answer your question at all because you said something about rat life. Uh, Sometimes you need the setup, you know, <laughs> that's the that's the preface. We're yeah. in the novel. Well, what, was, what was your question? <laughs> <Rat life>. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just that. <laughs> Really looking at the whole um, service part of anything in life, right? It doesn't have to be some grandiose thing. It could be yeah. your friend's like, hey, can you've got a truck. Can you help me move? And again, it's like, yeah. oh, well, it's going to take my time, take my gas, take my day. And it's like, or I have an opportunity to add value to someone's life and in 100%. turn I'm getting value back. And so yeah. for me as an outsider, as someone who really doesn't know you, it yeah. seems to me like that is what – your company and that's what rat life is and that's what you're doing so however you want to start talking about it whether it's oh, elaborating see, on the yeah. name what the name yeah. means because it seems a little like you can kind of pick up on what that name is referring to or why <laughs> well, like why this twofold. was how you chose to make 
your um, why and your what meet up, you know, whatever. I could talk about this for hours. So the first thing is understand that rat life is just a what to my why. As in, I would highly recommend to your readers to read uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It's an amazing book. And basically it goes over how everyone in life communicates with what and then how and then why in that order. As in, I don't talk about what my thing is. It's just pre-workout. I don't talk about how it's better than other people. All I talk about when I communicate it is why. As in, the purpose of this company is just a what to my why. And my why is to inspire others that we can all make it. We can all make it. It doesn't matter who you are, where you start, where you come from, what adversity or tragedy you faced. You can decide to become the hero of your story. You can decide that you can have anything that you want. doesn't matter if it's fitness related. I started at 145 pounds. If I didn't believe I can make it in my fitness accolades, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Um, you know, I started out, and I put this on my YouTube video a couple weeks ago. Um, seven and a half years ago, I was on food stamps, um, social security, and welfare. If I still lived, or if I didn't believe that I could make it, I would still be in that state of poverty, in that poor mindset, instead of uh, wealth and abundance mindset, which goes far beyond the financial. Um, so start with why is a book I would highly recommend, but in terms of what rat life is, that's exactly what it is. It's the sole belief that we can all make it. And the name is just, I love it because it's synonymous with number one, the rat life, you know, it's just anyone who goes to the, I was at the gym a week ago and I was trying to record with my product and shot. This girl comes out to me and she sees me uh, clearly struggling with it. And, she, and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get the, you know, my product in the shot. And she was like, no, no, I get it. You're trying to represent the rat life. And I was like, that's exactly it. <laughs> you it's get just, it. What I love about it is it's so universal. As in, to me, and why the company it means so much is the rat life is uh, working a dead-end job that you hate. It's being in a relationship with no trust, no love, no presence. It's um, waking up with no passion. It's, um, you know, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. It's being alive but not living. That is the rat life. And it's being the victim, Right. So for me, with this company, is my whole idea was I want to offer people an escape. I want to offer people the opportunity to change their story. That's all it is. As in, it's just a pre-workout, you know. But at the end of the day, you start going to the gym. You start gaining confidence. You start applying the virtues that you exalt in your training from patience, from self-love, from discipline, from work ethic, from uh, perseverance, from knowing how to deal with failure. You apply any of the virtues you exalt in there into any other aspect of your life, it is inevitable that you become successful in any endeavor. Um, I honestly think there's a great quote and it says, we live in an emotionally weak uh, generation where everyone needs everything watered down for them, including the truth. And I just love that. And the fact is the reason COVID hit people so hard, number one is it hit on everybody's uh, human needs. There's six human needs and I could go over them super briefly. It's a certainty, uncertainty significance love connection uh growth and contribution my sixth finger is holding the camera <laughs> and and that's that was the biggest reason that it hit everyone is like it hit all that but the fact the other reason it hit everyone is a lot of people live in a state of fear and a state of scarcity as in the reason COVID hit so hard for people and is because they they saw this as this is happening to me they didn't see it as uh, the, when, when COVID happened, I was in turmoil at the start. I'm not going to lie about it because all my what I knew as my reality became shattered. Like I lost my online coaching business. Uh, there was no love connection because everybody's in quarantine. So you have no connection with anyone except through social media. And um, you lose uh, certainty as in you don't know, you know what's going to happen. Um, you stop growing because whatever your passion is, like I know some people that were into Disneyland that, that went. Some people lost their business. So their finances stopped growing. Uh, for me, I lost the gym and I lost traveling, so I stopped going there. And then you stop contributing because you get less and less happy and less and less certain and less and less confident. And so you stop giving. And so as a result, um, you stop producing. And then, dude, your whole world goes to shit. Versus I snapped out of that when I was like, what if this is the single greatest opportunity of my lifetime? What if while everyone is retreating? What if while everyone is living in a state of scarcity, a state of lack, a state of fear? What if I took all this time and invested it in myself and my personal development and uh, starting my own business. And, you know, while everyone is, is uh, doing lack, while everyone is in fear, what if I would took, had courage to pursue? And so that's when this idea actually uh, action was pushed behind it to see this company come to fruition. And right now is just the current state of the last seven months of preparation. There's a great quote and it goes, um, um, luck 
is when preparation meets opportunity, you know? So it's, uh, you're rewarded in public for what you've practiced for thousands of hours in private. Um, someone who's an overnight success, you haven't seen the failures that they endured for years. Oh yeah. It's not know? overnight. So that, that, that's the whole idea with this company is I want to give people a chance to change their story. I want to lose, lose the victim mentality. And it's one person at a time. And I saw this great quote and it was like, um, imagine how impossible of the feat it is to change yourself. Right now, try to change someone else, right? It's impossible. It's impossible to change someone else. It's a decision that they have to make for themselves. I believe you can't motivate anyone, but you can inspire other people. But motivation comes in, 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 intrinsically, it comes internally, as in that's a decision you make for yourself. You de- there, There's a day, it's like you said, a split decision that you decide to become the victim, or I'm sorry, to lose the victim and become the hero of your story, of your movie, of your life, of your book. Like, And that's a decision people have to make for themselves. And that's the whole idea with Rat Life, is what if, what if, JR, one person at a time, we could, if we could plant a seed, I can, it's possible, we can all make it. That plants the seed of belief, not in any, the belief in them. And they tap into their potential for the first time. And then they take a little bit of action and they get a little bit of results. And what does it do? It re-solidifies their belief. It's possible. I can. We can all make it. They tap into more potential. They take more action. They get even better results. And do you know what happens? It proves my why true that we can all make it, that we can all become the hero. You know, so that's, I feel like, And this is in the book, The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. It said, success is your duty, responsibility, obligation. I truly believe this company is my responsibility because I'm the only one that can bring this to life. I'm the only one that has, that that can see this vision so clearly. And it is my responsibility to do a good job and effectively communicate my why um, to others and everything I say and everything I do, because that is what's going to inspire behavior. um, And that's what's going to plant the seed of belief in other people. And then there's a great quote before you ask me the next question is... There's a great a story by Les Brown. He's a great motivational speaker. And he says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around you are all your dreams, all your goals, all your ambitions that you didn't pursue. And they say, we came to you and only you could have given us life. Now we must die here with you. And it's like, for me, fear is so powerful because a lot of people, they fear the discipline, they fear the work, they fear the action. I'm very conscious of the greater fear, which isn't the pain of uh, discipline. It's the pain of regret, as in you're never going to look back on your life regretting trying something and failing. But what is going to fucking kill you is knowing you could have, knowing you could have taken action, you could have tried. Um, and the, the thoughts that are going to kill you is who you could have been, what you could have had, what you could have done, and the person you could have become, the impact you could have had on other people's lives had you had the courage to go for it, to believe in yourself, to pursue, to take action. And, dude, that is the worst pain in life. So for me, it's my responsibility to see this company come to fruition um, and literally give my all to it because if I do not – then that pain of regret is going to kill me. And so I'm more afraid of wondering what if than I am to fail. You know, knowing you put it all, you gave it all, you put it on and you came up short and you failed, dude, who cares? You know, like the, it's all in your head when you think people are, um, you know, wishing for your downfall or whatever, dude, you're not that important. Like no one gives a shit what you know about my my business (laughs) family. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Dude, people want to see you win, man. Like they, they want to see you win on the inside because it's like when they see you make it, they, they it's like a seed. They're like, man, dude, I can make it too. And it's just if the reason I'm taking everyone along along this journey from the day one, the why I'm, you know, I feel it's my responsibility to make the YouTube videos to put the content up, isn't for me. Like the videos that I do, there, there's a great quote. It's by uh, Eric Thomas, and it goes, um, "When you speak, all you're doing is saying things you already know." Like you, you don't learn anything from when you talk. You learn by listening, by learning from other people. As in speaking is just you saying the shit you already know. So the things that I post on social media, on YouTube, it's just that's what you already know. And that's honestly the lessons you're trying to reteach yourself. Like all, all the captions that I post on my social media, that's that's for me to read. Man. That's I watch my stories because it's like I need to get that into my skull. Like those things, I need to abide by that. I need to be um, uh, aligned in harmony of my why – we can all make it and everything I say and everything that I do. So it just keeps me accountable. But yeah. (laughs) It's my responsibility. I wrote that down. I, it's my responsibility. That is something that I 
am just super impacted by as a statement hearing from somebody else because as you were talking I was thinking about the victim versus hero and the way I've kind of always put it in my own context for me it's the exact same thing but it's um you can be a victim of your circumstances or you can be a victor over your circumstances I love right that. yes and so yes. it's and it's I'm in uh, yeah. Can I buy? Yes. yeah and it's and it's true and and like you you know you touched on a lot of things and um speaking of covid and and everything that has happened and how the world has literally turned upside down for so many people um i do think that the way that you choose, because it's a choice, the way you choose to look at things is going to be what is manifested and what allows itself to 100%. be bred and live in your life. Because this COVID, yeah, this COVID thing sucked. Everybody's quarantined. You're not yeah. able to see certain people. You're not able to travel, pursue certain passions. Um, yeah. But there was something in there too that, it, and you know, I am somebody who lost a very close loved one to this disease. But at the same time, in this in this time frame of what it has done to our daily lives, uh, there is something that can be beautiful in it, right? You do have time to reflect on yourself. You have time to grow or pursue something that maybe you would have never thought of in the first place, right? Absolutely. And, and so I like that it's my responsibility. It's my responsibility it to utilize what is in front of me and what maybe I don't even have yet to create what it is that I'm manifesting and what I'm wanting. See, that, that, that's the problem. Everyone gets caught up with the how. Like, when, when people ask me, like, you know, oh, man, you, you quit your job. What are you going to do? I was like, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. Like, I, I have no idea. And that scares them, man. Like, the fact that they don't know the how. But it's like, dude, you got to let go of the how. It's going to figure itself out, dude. It's going to work out. We're going to make it. Um, that, that's one thing I would tell people to let go of is the how. In terms of the responsibility thing, that's actually in the book, Man's Search for Meaning, JR, by Viktor Frankl. And it goes... Um, if they have the uh, Statue of Liberty on the East Coast, they should have the Statue of Responsibility on the West. And <laughs> basically, it's like like that quote that I told you of uh, your dreams and ambitions and goals, looking at you on your deathbed saying, we came to you. That's part of what it means. It's your responsibility. As in everyone, every, I don't care who you are. You have a gift. You have a uniqueness. You have a passion. There was some... There's some dream you have that was given to you, some some why that was given to you that only you can come, uh, fulfill, that only you can see come to life, only you can see come to fruition. I don't care what it is that no one else can. Because of that fact, it is your responsibility to see it come to uh, fruition. I wish – this isn't going to be uh, um, uh, agreed upon by your viewers, but I wish people got reprimanded for playing the victim. Like I wish it was frowned upon to not realize your full potential. I wish um, comfort was – as a society, um, frowned upon. I wish people got whipped, metaphorically speaking, uh, for not closing the gap between who they are and, and pursuing the, which is a courageous act, it's a courageous feat to pursue and close the gap between who you are and the potential of who, who you can be. I wish, uh, you know, doing the safe shit, playing the life safely, staying within your comfort zone. I wish that was not encouraged. I wish. Uh, you know, checking the boxes of, you know, going to college, getting the house, getting your mortgage, you know, 25 years, whatever, retiring for six, dying. I wish that that wasn't the norm. I wish the norm was have the courage to pursue your dream. It's going to be OK. you got the support. Dude, we're all wishing you to win. Um, yeah. And then there was uh, another thing that you just said. Oh, I lost my train of thought. But yes, you, you get the idea. I'm sure. <laughs> I know I do. I get the idea because I I completely agree. I empathize with it. Oh, Responsibility. Wait, let me cut you off hard. Cut me off. Go Respo for it. Respo responsibility. So yes. The first time, and th dude, this shifted my mindset on money, on finances, is I was listening to Grant Cardone, who he wrote the 10X Rules, the first book I read on personal development. And he said, success and wealth is your duty, obligation, responsibility. And I said, that doesn't make sense. Excuse me. That's greedy. I said, that's greedy. Financial abundance and wealth. I said, that's greedy. Um, what do you mean? It, it's uh, And he said, it's it's selfless. He said, if you're not pursuing financial prosperity and wealth and abundance, you're selfish. And I said, but Grant, how is that selfish? I feel like, or how is that selfless? I feel like that's the most selfish endeavor you could embark on. And he said, think about it. You're fucking useless to your charity if you're broke. You are you. Your your word, your will, your goodwill. That shit means nothing to the charity that you want to produce, to the mother or the family member you you want to take care of. To think think about this: if you get to the point of a uh, you have your own business and you start your own company or whatever, and you get into a position that you can employ someone, you can give someone a living. Dude, how is that selfish? 
where you give someone a livelihood to provide for their family. It is the most selfless thing you can do. And people think that greed and wealth is self selfish. Think about this. For someone to be wealthy, they have to provide like a hundred times that value to other people. The reason that it's fine for Jeff Bezos to be a billionaire, a, a very, very wealthy billionaire, is because he gives trillions of dollars of value to other people. Like trillions. You know what I mean? So it's the most – take prioritizing yourself, your happiness, filling your cup. There's a great quote. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't give what you don't have. You know, And that goes beyond finances. Like If you're not whole and happy and confident, you're fucking useless to other people. And I'll tell this to your viewers now. If you aren't whole and happy, you can't give what you don't have. You can't give the potential, the, ma- the, the max potential of what you could. So it is selfless to take care of yourself. It is selfless to practice and be patient and loving with your emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual um, maturity. As in, if you're not filling those cups, if you're not winning that, it's in the book, um, uh, hold on, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, it love talks that about- one. It's really good. It talks about winning the daily private victory, and that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Is like it, the the three is just the spirit, the spiritual, the mental, and the physical. So it's just going to the gym, going for a walk, whatever. Uh, and meditating is what I do uh, to uh, fill my spiritual cup. And the mental is like you said, it's the internal dialogue. So if you can conquer those three, if you can win the daily private victory, then it gives you the opportunity to win the daily public victory, which is when other people come into play. And like I said, if you don't fill your cup, you cannot give to other people the potential of what you could. So for you who wants to give more to the people you love, you have to be what other people deem as selfish, but it is the most selfless thing you can do. Um, Pursuing uh, financial abundance is selfless. Uh, Pursuing your best physique, sharpening yourself to where you have the most uh, me- mental, emotional, spiritual uh, maturity, the most um, experience in terms of your academic knowledge and your financial prowess, like you making yourself better. It's not about what you get. It's about who you become and what you're able to give because you've become more. Man. I, can't, I can't stress that enough. So that, that's what it comes. That's why it is your responsibility to become your best self. And that's why I do not I do not sympathize. I'll empathize. Because that's rule number five that I'm, I, it's the hardest thing for me. And, and luckily for Stephen Covey, the author of that book, it was the hardest thing for him is um, seek to understand before being understood. It is the hardest thing for me to under, try to put myself in the shoes of the victim. It is very hard. It's very hard for me to sympathize with people who bitch and moan and feel sorry for themselves and play woe is me when I champion perspective. When I see people who have worse conditions, worse circumstances, and yet they show up with a smile. I trained a client who, uh, after his radiation treatments for his cancer, he would go up and show up to his training and go in through a grueling workout with a smile. How can I sympathize with other people who their worst day is someone else's dream life? Someone else in this world is dreaming to live out your worst day. Yeah, and it's wow. just like, for me, that's why that uh, uh, seek to understand before being understood is the hardest bridge for me to gap. But I'm working on it. That's why, you know, the thing I need to work on the most is emotional maturity. And that's where that comes down to is just humility. And just there's a great quote. And it's by how to win, fl- win friends and influence people that your viewers will really like. Hey, is, it, it goes like this. It says, do not measure others by the yardstick of your own years. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, whoa, that's so good. Because how, how true is that? Like people, parents specifically, they'll, they'll scorn and they'll reprimand their kid from the yardstick of their own years. They expect the kid to have the maturity of 30 years. And it's just like, dude, it's, it, who were you when you were that age? You know what I'm saying? Like I see it all the time in the gym where I'll see like a, a little turkey, like, you know, they, they, it's like a machismo thing. I don't know. And so for me, it's just I look at them and I'm just like, first it's just frustration, just like get the fuck out of my way. And then the second thought that goes through my head is, Tark, you were probably like that. And I was just like, ah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I do. I totally, I get that. I get that not in the, not in the gym sense because I'm, you know what I'm I, am, <laughs> I am not uh, by any means a, a gym aficionado. I mean, I, I know my workouts. I know what I do that. You look fantastic. You don't need to go to the gym. You're killing it. No, I do. I need to go to the gym. Well, oh my God. Okay. Side note. So again, for my listeners to just, I'm always transparent. Always, always, always. Yeah. Uh, no, during, <laughs> dude, during, during this, like at the peak of this, your girl was, um, fluffy, like mad fluffy <laughs> and my pants we're, were, we're like, bulking, baby. My, my, for, yeah, bulking sure. Yeah. We've, we've yes. definitely been cutting cause it's been a journey. Like I have had to give myself grace and I'm not, yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not gracious to myself enough. I can be gracious with other people, especially in interpersonal settings. 
I do have a hard time being sympathetic, like as you mentioned. Um, I will hear somebody complain or uh, it's a challenge, man. And, and it's, like it's I have very hard girlfriends of mine that are like my best friends, and I hear them complain about like damn near the same situation over and over and over and over again and i'm like then change yeah. it and i have yeah. I, i'm such a book person too so like i have yeah. a shelf like i you can't see it back there but there's like a shelves of books and just nice. stuff. i like it um yes. and and i've like bought these books that have changed my life for friends like um how to make your bed or 15 invaluable laws of growth or you are a badass and things that like speak to me and i like resonate with me and i'm like this can really change you if you choose to change that's the problem and so um but no so that's the thing is you know i i get i get what you're saying there in terms of having to be a little more gracious with other people and and how that can also help you build yourself and be better because that there's a reason that it's one of the the rules and um being able to understand but then also making sure that you do realize that self-care is not selfish that, that's the that's the biggest uh, gap for people to bridge. I feel like they constantly and I, dude, I've been I've been a victim of this. Like I've all the time will pour from an empty cup. Like I'll just give, 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 and then just, dude, I have nothing left, and it's just I'm running on fumes trying to. Yeah. You find it a lot with people who are positive, happy, go lucky because they put on this face because they know that they're the rock for other people. You know, like they're like I have to show up, I have to bring, it, I have to be happy mm-hmm. because other people are relying on me to be super positive, super bubbly, super energetic. And, you know, so I have to put on a, a mask. I have to put on a facade for their sake. And they forget that, dude, taking a break off of social media so that you have so much more to give isn't selfish, man. It's a necessity sometimes, dude. And wh- whatever the way you um, you fill your cup. For me, it's to get out of myself. Like the, the when I start to feel stressed, when I start to feel anxiety, when I start to feel doubt, it's because I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about my problems. I'm thinking about my woes. The second I do that, I was like, dude, Tark snap the fuck out of it and focus on what you can give others this second and the second you do that the second you focus on serving a why a person whatever greater or or just different from you you'll you'll lose that scarcity stress mindset in an instant um and and especially if you take the time to practice oxytocin it's a win-win because you get a happy chemical released so you'll become more happy and that's why uh, when people give you it makes you want to give even more it's because you're literally uh, by biologically making yourself happier by doing something selfless that requires time, energy, and effort for other people. It's why um, writing a letter is well more well received than sending an email because the, the other person knows time, energy, and effort and thought was put behind it. So uh, that's the best advice that I can give people is um, whenever you're feeling down, whenever you're feeling stressed, we all do. Whenever you need to fill your cup, just literally. St- Take all the time to focus on – just shift all your focus, energy, and thought to something else, a work, a passion, um, the, you know, something that's like the gym, your meditation, whatever, like win your daily private victory, but also focus on um, giving to other people, man. And if I, I've, I've had that question. I Luckily, I watched this uh, – This it, was like, it wasn't really an interview. It was like this dude talking to Gary Vaynerchuk, and he was like, where, where do you find balance between giving – and then working on yourself. And he was like, the fact that you even have to an- ask that question t- says that your heart and mind is in the right place. Um, Cause that's a challenge I've struggled with. It's like, I want to grow. So I know I have to give, but if I want to fill my cup, I was like, dude, which one do you f- do first? And it's just like, dude, do whatever you feel like doing at that time. Like if you feel like, dude, I need to work on my physical maturity, dude, go train. If you feel like I need to work on my, uh, um, my uh, spiritual maturity go meditate go take a yoga class if you feel like i need to work on my uh my mental maturity check that internal dialogue do you know how i do it anytime i'm cooking i'm waking up and getting around in the morning i'm in the shower i'm driving i'll either listen to the music that you know i vibe to you know like uh, house music or or i'll listen to tony robbins jim Rohn, les brown simon sinek eric thomas do you know how nurturing that is to only feed your mind good when you have these motivational speakers that call every fucking day, JR, tell you it's possible. I can. We can all make it. You slowly start to believe that for yourself. The hardest part about confidence with everyone is you live in a world where everyone tells you it's not possible. Everyone projects their own limiting beliefs. Everyone tells you you can't. Do you know how it's it's as if the transformation, whether it's a physical, uh, financial, academic, whatever, as if the transformation is not fucking hard enough. Now you have to basically lie to yourself to convince yourself that it's possible when a thousand people are telling you it's not that you can't. Uh, You know, that is the hardest part. (laughs) 
I tell people all the time, the hardest part isn't the transformation, dude. The hardest part is drowning out all the critics and believing you can make it. It's possible. I can. And the best way you can do that is honestly, like you said, stand, or I said, but, but you touched on, standing at the doorway of your mind, guarding the doorway of your mind. People are so quick to protect themselves from physical harm. How many people are not are just allowing all this um, uh, mental harm? Yeah, dude? wow, seriously. The, the, and it's just like, if people were, like you said, cognizant about how powerful thoughts are, they literally, by that cycle I told you, of belief, potential, action, results, your thoughts, that's why thoughts become things. It's about, it literally becomes and determines what you know as your current circumstances or conditions is your thoughts. If people knew how powerful those single things were, how powerful belief is, how powerful giving, what meaning you give things is, they would literally be way more conscious about it and they would take a proactive action like you have with your books. And it's just, that's the day you decide to become the hero and not the victim. That's the day you start taking responsibility for your life. And that's the day, dude, that's the, the day you start living a life worth living and you start writing a story that you want to read at times that, you know, and then as a result, inevitably, not only will you be successful, not only will you get everything you want, but you will be able to give so much more to everyone you love and care about because you have become so much more. Boom. <laughs> Boom. No, honestly, that's a great, it's a great full circle because you did touch on that in the beginning and um, for it to be able to just be brought up in context again, it, it's important. I think there's a lot of fear of failure and that's why there's a limiting belief there because people are afraid of what people think and these are all the things that we've been talking about today. So um, for my own two cents, I would say don't be afraid to fail, just fail and who cares if it's public or private, Pu private is better. So try to do it earlier fail fast fail often then get oh, your success out huge. there that's huge to fail fast yeah. yeah and and do it i mean i one of the stupid examples that i gave during the quarantine was um i'm at a point in my life where it's, it's very easy for me to not really care about what people think and so yeah. um i had blonde highlights in my hair and i was like you know what i'm gonna dye my hair purple because why not because it's quarantine i'm not going into work i could have whatever color hair i want i've always wanted to do purple let's go well it was blue based so it, it was blue based so it faded um, and when it faded the blue mixing with my yellow blonde highlights turned green and my hair was green and it was ugly um and i was like okay doing all this research like how do i cancel this how do i get this out of my hair because i don't like it so i'm gonna change it because that's one of the things we have to do and this is a super simple analogy but i dyed it red right um because yeah. red cancels green and i was like you know what i would have never done red but i love it and i've done it about four times now because i dig it and that's all that matters but i would have yeah. never had this cool experience had i not decided to do something that i didn't know how the outcome was going to be failed in the middle with the freaking green hair and then this cool red thing happened. So that's my stupid little analogy that I put up on Instagram of if you fail in the middle, you'll succeed in the end. And that's what that's what matters. Uh, that's a good one. I like that yeah. one. Yeah. That's good. So we'll start wrapping it up here because um, I've taken it. so much of your time. But the <laughs> last question I will ask you is if you had one piece of advice that you could nice. give the listeners to help them exercise confidence every day, what would it be? Write down your goals, 100%. That's, that's literally your confidence will build by just keeping the promises you make to yourself. Um, I honestly don't think you can control emotions as easily as you can control action. And the more you control your action, it'll um, all over time, as long as you're just patient with yourself, uh, your action will determine your, uh, your emotion. And one thing that I do every single day that's literally broken the fear is I take a, I end every cold sh uh, every shower in the coldest setting and I take a cold shower. What that's doing is the voice in everyone's head that is fear is telling you to not do the work, to half-ass the action, to uh, you know take that rest day from the gym. That's fear. It's, uh, the voice is fear. And for me, I've drowned that motherfucker out by controlling will. As in, when I go and I go reach for that handle, there's not even that time anymore. There's a quote by Grant Cardone that says, the best way to kill fear is to starve it of time. And for me, when I reach for that handle and I turn on the cold set, cold, the coldest setting, I'm telling my body, no, motherfucker, this is what I say it's going to be. And I apply that, that, uh, that uh, attack on fear mindset to everything else that I do. So for me, when you attack fear full front and you're going to find this in i'm reading the book right now think and grow rich and i'm, I'm just like at the very start of it, I'm on page like 26 but there's a story where this little girl goes up to this like farmer dude and he's like my mammy needs 50 cents he's like get out of here and then she uh, goes up to him and she's like, but my mammy needs 50 cents and then he's like he's about to attack her and then while he's coming towards she steps forward 
and then screams at the top of her lungs and then he just stands there in shock and then gives her the money and then the the author says uh napoleon hill he's like if you can glean what just happened you you need not read the rest of the book and the way that i see it is um Will Smith says the same thing. It's like, you're only afraid of something until you do it. As in, if you just attack it full-fledged, full-on, number one, you're going to realize it wasn't that big of a deal anyway. Number one, if you're just conscious about the fact that you've survived 100% of your worst days, you have nothing to worry about, dude. Yes. There, 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 there's nothing to stress about with failure. And I think the reason that people champion failure the most or why they uh, let it live their life is because they're not conscious of the bigger fear which isn't failure, like I said, it's a, it isn't the pain of discipline, it's the pain of regret. And I, and I feel like if more people were more conscious about that, then um, if, if more people were conscious about the, the fear, the greater pain, the fear of regret, then they, w- they would take more action. But that's the best single thing I could do uh, to your viewers. I'm not telling them to take a cold shower, but I'm telling them, practice writing down your goals every day. That's going to be the easiest start. It could be anything. And then the, if you watch that video of the military dude, he was like, the reason you got to make your bed every morning. I thought that was just a, a load of shit. The fact is people think neglecting in the little things, the little disciplines don't affect other areas of their life. And the fact is it's the little things you do day in and day out that determine the quality of your life. As in, if you neglect the little shit, the picking up the trash, the making your bed for me, keeping the promises I make to myself, which is taking a cold shower, brushing my teeth, whatever, going to the gym. If you don't keep those small promise, promises, neglect will come into, it will creep into every other aspect of your life. As in, there's a quote in the 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, he says, people who will limit their potential success will limit the amount of action that they'll take to achieve it. And that's so true. As in, people who say, I don't want to be financially successful, you know, uh, I don't want to have the best physique. They will limit the amount of action that they'll take to achieve it. And it's, it's just all it is is a conveniency to get them out of doing the work. And that's the biggest frustration. But to your viewers, if I could say anything, one piece of advice, write down your goals. There's a biological effect. When you cross out your goals, you get dopamine, man. It's a happy chemical. And it's going to solidify confidence. The confidence is going to creep into the belief. The belief is going to tap into the potential that you tap into. That's going to determine the action you take. That will determine the results you get, and it's an upward cycle. It starts with you writing down your goals, and then it'll slowly but surely cultivate the thought. I can. It's possible. We can all make it. And uh, before you know it, it's a story you have to tell yourself, it, what seems like a lie, right? Um, over time, you'll believe it enough to where you'll, uh, your current, what you know as your current uh, human circumstance or condition will come to fruition. Man. You'll be like, you'll look at yourself X years from now and be like, oh shit, it is possible. I could, I did make it. You know, so that's the best advice I could give is uh, write down your goals. And then, uh, dude, don't get caught up in the day-to-day struggles. Keep your eyes on the horizon. As in, the biggest fear, a question to ask people is very simplistic. What do you want? That is the hardest question for people to answer because people don't know what they fucking want. As in, They're very vague. I want to lose weight. Okay, you lost a pound. Are you happy? Well, no. I gave you exactly what you wanted. People don't know what they want because they fear they they fear asking themselves that because they fear the answer. And sometimes that answer could be, I want out of this relationship. I want to move out of this house. I want to quit my job. I want to move out of this country. And that scares the shit out of them. Because number one is they they fear who they're gonna lose. Number two, they fear the work that they're gonna have to take to realize their goal. And number three, the people that they might, they might hurt. And I already touched on that, but that's the thing. Write down your goals, write down what it is that you want. And if you want to give, uh, if you want me to give your viewers an exercise, this is what I did back in 2018. I went to the beach. I treated myself, you know, I got some Jamba juice and uh, Caribbean passion, favorite flavor. And then I went to, uh, I went to Laguna beach, favorite beach, Victoria beach. And in this exercise that Tony Robbins was like, you know, to, to achieve happiness, confidence. He was like, if you want some, to take an action plan, try this. You can tell uh, it was a low point in my life. You know, I was like searching how to be confident. <laughs> and We've all this been is what, there. It, it's 100% true. And it, like you said, it's a muscle. Dude. You just practice it. Be patient with yourself. That's how we all make it, dude. No one – don't uh, compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter ten. Yep. Like, you know. And so anyway, I went to the beach and he was like, the first thing you're going to do is write down um, everything – uh, where you are in every aspect of your life, your finances, your physique, your relations, your, uh, you know, your academics, whatever, write down everything the way it is. Don't look, see it worse than it is. Don't see it better than it is. Just be honest with yourself. How can we go where we want to go? If we don't know where we are, 
right? Don't kid yourself, dude. Just be honest. Then write down what it is that you want. Everything. Don't worry about the how. I hate when people write down goals and dreams that they're like, it needs to be realistic. Bullshit. That's just a limiting belief because you haven't tapped into that potential yet. Don't worry about the how. Let go of that. If you want seven million dollars write that down if you want this person as your uh, you know i have a friend who's like she loves henry cavill who's the actor for the play superman she fucking loves it yeah. and i was like I, I, i'm like girl don't you let that dream die <laughs> 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 like, like there's write down what it is that you want whether it's a physique finances academics a, a level of uh you know spiritual abundance any emotional maturity a, a company a why a mission you know, a family, a dog, write down what you want. Okay. Third thing, write down the rituals that have gotten where you are now. What is it? The shit that you're doing or not doing the action you're taking or not taking that have created your current circumstance or condition. This exercise requires a lot of strength, a lot of humility, um, and a lot of honesty. And then the fourth thing is write down the actions and what it's going to take for you to get what you want. And then you'll start to take action towards your, you know, the life you want to live. The way that I see it, dude, is I wish people um, understood how fleeting of a moment this is. Not only this opportunity, but this life. You're gonna, dude, you're gonna blink, and it's gonna be ten years from now, and you're gonna look back, and you're you're not gonna worry about the failure, man. You're not gonna. You're not going to be fretting about the opinions of the people that you're giving so much weight to right now. What's going to burn in your soul is the regret, is the what if commentary, is who could I have been? Where could I have gone? What could I have had? And so it, it, it sounds silly to just write down your goals, but if you actually break up it apart, it's creating the thoughts, which creates the belief, which taps into the potential, which takes the action. And, and it's tangible, dude. It becomes real. Because it's a thought is, is, is just the start. That's conceptualization, right? It's not tangible yet. But thoughts become tangible by the action that you take. And you got to visualize it, dude. For me, I practice visualization through meditation. As in any soccer player, they'll, they'll tell you. It's like they've, they've imagined themselves scoring the goal a thousand times in their head before they actually take the action to do it. As in anyone who's achieved any successful accolade. I saw this in a bodybuilding video when I was watching, uh, his name's Chris Bumstead, his prep for the Olympia. And he was like, I visualized every fucking day winning first place, how it would feel, the speech I was going to say every single day where it, it, and Kobe Bryant says the same thing. I, I listened to him in an interview. He was like, uh, people are like, are you are you nervous? Are you whatever? He's like, no, dude, I've practiced this for thousands of times, thousands of times in my head, seeing it and thousands of times in the practice on the court in the gym like. This, this, this is just a rehearsal for me, dude. Success will become a rehearsal. Your financial goal or your wealth or like in, in terms of like spiritual wealth, um, your physical health, wealth, whatever, your men, anything, any goal that you want, any dream you want to see realized will become a reality because you've, dude, you've seen it over and over and over again. You believe it so much. Your mind doesn't know the difference between reality and between um, your, um, your, your thoughts. That's how powerful they are. As in, you can attest to this. You can give yourself anxiety, stress, raise your cortisol just by simulating an event. Like you could just stress over nothing and then that will – Oh my god, your, yeah. Your, 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 your mind does not know the difference between the reality, uh, the real event, and the one that you're creating in your head. That's why they say like a coward dies a thousand times because they, they've lived that death, right, that fear, whatever, a thousand times before and even if it ever came to fruition. So – if people knew how powerful their thoughts were, how powerful practicing visualization is, how powerful writing your goals down, crossing them off, developing your confidence, being consistent, any dream, any goal can become a reality given enough action with enough massive action with more action. Not It's a quote by Winston Churchill, not losing enthusiasm from failure to failure over a long enough period of time, you will make it. You will make it. End of, it's inevitable. The, it, there's a great quote in Jim Rohn's um, Seasons of Life, and it goes, it's as if the time as, it's as if time and the fates conspire, as if to say, we best step aside, for we are powerless against this kind of resolve. And that is so true. You'll notice that. Luck, there, there's no, luck is bullshit. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. The problem is people give up. They, they don't uh, fail fast. They don't fail forward. They see failure as the end all instead of as just a stepping stone. Starts with writing down your goals, man. So, write down your goals, please. <laughs> well, honestly, just thank you so much for everything you shared. There is just a wealth of 
information that can change somebody's life if they choose to take what you've said and apply it. So thank you, Tarek, so much. I'm so grateful to have had you. Not only are you an embodiment of living what exercise confidence is, but you've done a great job of expressing it um, verbally here today. So just thank you, honestly. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. All right, exercise confidence listeners, there you have it. What an inspirational episode, at least in my opinion, and I hope it was for you too. I love how a lot of what Tarek had to say was passing on knowledge that he has gained on his own journey, whether it was through reading, videos, or even other podcasts. I think it's important that we share the knowledge that we accumulate along our journey with those that we come in contact with. Not only does it help us to add a little bit of good to the world, but it also helps those that we share and add value to their lives with. Tune in next week as we sit down with Nick Maridueña. He has a really cool story. He's a lot different from anybody that I've interviewed on Exercise Confidence, but what he has to say I think will be something that you can get a lot out of. As always, signing off, I am JR Nasari, and I hope that you find a way to exercise confidence every day.